Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another card kit video for SimonSysStamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the stamp set from the July 2018 card kit. And this stamp set is just packed with fun images and matching puns. And you can actually do this card design that I'm gonna show you today with any of the images in the stamp set. But today I'm going to be using the cactus and the greeting that says stuck on you. I'm starting out with some watercolor paper. This is Canson XL watercolor paper. Unfortunately, this isn't included in the kit. However, if you wanted to do Copic coloring or coloring with colored pencils or something like that that doesn't require a watercolor paper, you could definitely use the card suck that's included in the kit. So I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which is a waterproof pigment ink, and I've stamped the greeting and then also the cactus repeatedly all around that center area. And if you could uh, notice when I first started stamping, I had some of this cactus stamp on my uh, misty grid paper before I started. That's because this is the second time I've made this card. The first time didn't go so well. It didn't turn out exactly how I envisioned. I'm sure many of you can relate. And if you want to see how that uh, first version turned out, head over to my Instagram <laughs> because I'm going to put it on this post. You'll have to swipe to see it, but I'm going to put it on this post and you can see what I was thinking about doing and how it didn't work out. One of the things I wanted to change with this one was I wanted to make sure that none of the cactus or cacti were upside down. So when I stamped them, I made sure that they were maybe tilted a little bit, but none of them were upside down. That was something I did on the first version that I didn't like. So I made sure that I improved on that with this version. So the watercolor paints I'm using today are from Prima. This is the tropical set and there aren't a lot of like super earthy or toned back colors in this. There are a couple, but I'm going to do a lot of color mixing for this watercolor painting today. And I'm, I wanted to show you how I mixed the colors so that they became the shades that I wanted them to be. So that first lime green color was straight from the pan. I didn't change it at all, but this darker green, I'm going to change a little bit. It was a little bit too bright green for me, like a bright, like a really like bluish green. And I wanted it to be toned back a little bit. So I added quite a bit of the brown and then I'm going to bring in just a little bit of this ochre shade and that's going to tone it back a little bit. And then I'm going to bring it in and shade the left hand side of this cactus. Now I'm going to do the same exact shading on every single cactus shown. If you wanted to, you could, um, you know, really think about a light source and you could change the shading on every single cactus if you wanted to, but I was just going to keep it simple and do the same painting on every single cactus. So after I had the lime green, I put a little bit of that toned back darker green, and then I went back in and just added a little more of that lime green just to soften the edge and make sure there wasn't too much white left over on the right hand side of the cactus. And I did that for all of these cactus, cacti. I don't, know how to, I don't, I don't say cacti often enough to know how to really use it in a sentence. I'm sure there's a lot of words like that for you guys too. Um, but I wanted to show you how I added all of these all at once. I finished one cactus and then I painted all the others. So after I had most all of this green done on the cactus, I needed to add even a little bit more shading. So I brought in this darker blue and I'm going to water it down quite a bit. I'm going to add a lot of water and dilute it down so that it's more of a glaze and it's not going to add too much of that blue. In fact, when I put it on top of these green shades, it just really looks like a little bit more of a darker green. And that's exactly what I wanted to happen. So now I'm going to move on to the pots that these cacti are sitting in and I'm going to do three different shades and one of the shades is pretty much going to just be this brown color. Um, I did tone it down to, or toned it, toned it with just a little bit of the orange but for the most part it was all that brown. I'm just going to water it down a little bit make sure it's a nice consistency and then I'm going to take a red shade. Now there are two red shades in this palette. One is slightly more of a pinky red and the other one is more 
of a warmer rose red. And I'm using the rose red and adding some ochre. And I'm also going to add a little bit of the brown and even so a little bit of that orange color up there. That's because I'm going for a terracotta shade and it's not, it doesn't really turn out to be a perfect terracotta shade, but I just wanted something that was a little bit more toned than the colors that are already in this Tropicals palette. Uh, like I said before, this is the Tropicals palette from Prima, um, from their watercolor confections. And um, these are great colors. They have a lot of like jewel tone shades, but not really many that would go well for these cacti and these terracotta pots. So I'm just mixing all these colors, adding more and more. Like right now it's looking a little bit too brown, so I'm going to add some more red in there and just kind of mixing back and forth until I get a shade that I like. And once it's close, I like to bring in some scratch watercolor paper and just test it out because it never looks the same on paper as it does uh, in the pan or on your palette. So don't be afraid to have some scratch paper nearby and test out your colors. I'm using that yellow ochre shade straight from the pan without any changes. And then I'll bring in that terracotta color to add a little bit of that medium shade. And then I'm gonna go into this brown color. I'm gonna dry these first because I didn't want the brown to completely mix. So I just dried these a little bit with my heat tool. You don't have to have a heat tool. You definitely could just let them air dry. But then I brought in the brown as the darkest shade and I made sure to add it to the inside of that pot and then onto the left side of the pot as well. Just add a little bit more dimension so they look a little bit more round. So the basic painting of all the cacti is finished. So now I'm going to work on this background, all of the white that's left over. On the previous version of this card, I had mixed quite a bit of purple paint in my palette and I decided to save it when I redid the card. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm re-wetting that dried paint, making sure it's a nice consistency, adding a little bit more of that uh, pinkish red shade and I'm testing it quite a bit. I want to make sure I get this color really watered down. One of the things when I did the first version of this card that I didn't like was that the flat color in the background was too dark. I didn't think it was light enough to really let the black words stand out. So in order to get this diluted back and even lighter, I cleaned up the other side of my palette so I have a new well to mix in and I brought some of that color over and I'm adding a lot of water. I realized that as I added water to that first puddle of purple paint that it, it needed a lot more water and it, I would have had to eat, add even lots more water, like so much more water that I really needed to move on to a different puddle of purple paint in order to make it work. So I wanted to show you guys the process of painting this background because this is the uh, this is the way to get a nice flat color and not have any water drying spots. You notice that I've tipped up my board here and I'm making sure that there's a drop of paint or like that wet paint is collecting near the bottom because I'm tipping it up so gravity is pulling the water to one side. As long as you have that bead of paint and you keep working with the bead of paint, you won't get any dry backs or any weird dry spots. So you have to work fairly quickly to go around all these different shapes, but as long as you have that bead of, of really wet, watery paint going along the bottom of where you're painting, you won't have any strange dry backs. And when you get to the very end, and you, you have that bead of paint and you're worried about it, tap off your brush on a paper towel and then use your brush to sop up some of that color, some of the bead at the bottom, and that will stop it from rolling back and drying back in to your nice flat color area. That's the best way to get a nice flat color without any strange uh, water spots. So I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool, but of course you can let this just dry on its own if you want. And then I brought in a little bit of that darker purple. This was the, the puddle of purple paint that I had on the right side of my palette. And I'm bringing this in and adding just a drop shadow on the side. Now this really doesn't make sense because the light source on all of these cacti was coming from the right. So if this was supposed to be realistic, that shading would be on the other side. But um, 
let's be real now. This isn't realistic. All of these cacti are all over this. I'm not painting a realistic picture here. And I wanted to put the drop shadow to the right of all of the cacti. In fact, I'm going to add a drop shadow to the hearts and also to the greeting because I wanted this more intense purple shade to add interest. There was also a lot of that pale purple background and I wanted to mix it up a little bit, add a little bit more organic feeling to it. So I mixed up some more of that purple paint, trying to get a nice shade, and then I put it on the edge of an acrylic block and then use my brush to flick that paint onto my project. And that just gives me some nice paint splatters. Let that dry and then I cut up some foam adhesive. In the card kit you get a nice big sheet of foam adhesive and I just cut that into strips so that I can use it all over multiple projects instead of on just one. And then I adhered that down to the card base. Now this card kit, I'm so happy about this, comes with pre-scored and cut white card bases. Yay! I was so happy for that. Um, it sped up the process immensely. The last thing I did was I added some sequins. Now I do not know where these sequins are from. They were in like a loose unmarked baggie in my sequin stash. So unfortunately I don't know where these are from, but any purple or kind of like iridescent purple shades of sequins would work for this. Even just clear sequins would look great. That's the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Just a reminder, this is the July 2018 card kit. And even if you don't want the whole kit, you can get the, the stamp set on its own. And it's a lot of fun to work with just like I did today. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you guys very soon in another card video. Mm -hmm.